Okay, we are roughly five weeks away from WrestleMania. Yeah. yeah. There's a pay another pay-per-view right around the corner. Yeah, in fact, it's in a few days' time. You know what that means? It's the Raw before a pay-per-view. Oh, no. So all of the big matches should already be set up. We, we shouldn't be setting up anything else for this Sunday. Wrong. <laughs> right, let's, let's start it. So, we started the show the same way we started last week. Roman. Roman Reigns. What do you want alone? You know, he called out Seth. Yeah, because he said he, he knew what his plans were going forward. So, he sort of teased about mania and that, and then he was like, ah, it's all cool, like, you know, you earned it. Right, too right. You, you, you got what it takes to be, to be Brock. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then he said, right, I need to ask someone of you. And so, so yeah, 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 it's fine. Whatever you want, it's fine. I want to get the band back together. <laughs> No, anything but that. Why? No, I'm not doing that. Why again? i got to be completely honest here. I mean, they've reformed The Shield, what, three times since the original breakup? Yeah, pretty much. And each time it's been getting progressively worse. <laughs> yeah. So, they then called that Ambrose. <laughs> you, you, you came out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't do much much after that because he got bashed with a guitar. Mm -hmm. By Elias. Is this a rivalry we need? Probably not. Alright. Talking of rivalries we don't need. We had a six man tag match to open up the night. Yeah. We had the awful team. <laughs> Of Drew McIntyre, Bob, and Baron Corbin, who still dresses up like he's part of the authority. Why? You got fired three months ago from the authority. Why are you still wearing that ridiculous waistcoat? Mm -hmm. You ain't Gareth Southgate. <laughs> so, now you're facing off against Finn Balor. Uh -huh. Braun Strowman. Eh, yeah, for no reason whatsoever, Kurt. Yeah, he's randomly wrestling, who can? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll give this match some credit, it was alright. Yeah, it was alright. Other than the parts with Bob. Yeah, well, uh, Kurt got some German suplexes in on Drew. Yeah. He, he looks alright in this match. I did like the part where Braun put Leo Rush with a barricade. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. He was like, oh my god. <laughs> Wiped himself out in the process, but it was pretty funny. And then Bob and Drew McIntyre took advantage of this because I think Kurt had already been taken out at this point. Yeah. And Bob hit the spear on Finn Balor. Has he ever pinned anyone with the spear? I don't know, and I don't know if it's just me, but when I watched him do it, I've got to say, I, I, I don't like how he does the spear. Nah. Doesn't really it, follow through with it, does he? No, but like, once he's hit him, he like, turns it into a roly-poly. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I, I don't like it. And whilst we're on the subject there, I don't particularly like Bob, either. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't alone in that. <laughs> You know what, the funny thing is, if he left next week, no one would notice. No, not really. And probably no one would care. They'd be like, oh, Lashley's gone. Oh, yeah, great. Hmm. Yeah, then after the match, they beat everyone up and done the whole, oh, let's mimic the shield BS. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they, oh, was it, they ran Kurt Angle into the ring post, I think it was. And there was a set yeah. of steel steps being held up. Yeah. Yeah, and then was it Finn Balor? They like done like a double choke slam. Yeah, and onto, on the, the steps. Onto the steps. So, moving on. 
Got some women's action for you now. Okay. We've got Ronda's BFF, Natalia. And she's facing off against the leader of the Riot Squad. Oh, good God. So, there's a match. Happened. It flat out sucked. Mm. Natalia picked up the victory with Sharpshooter, I believe. Yeah, probably. Mm. Not that I was paying a lot of attention to this match because. And then. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, it, it was an alright match, but nothing really noteworthy. It wasn't even a long match. I mean, what, for a two and a half hour Raw, I think this match was given about five minutes. So, yeah. We're in the course. WWE have got to do their weekly thing. As Natalia was walking out the ramp, we got the Lacey Evans tease. She walked down the ramp, she walked back up the ramp. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. When are they just going to have a wrestle? I don't know if they're like holding off until after Ronda disappears and that. Probably. Or, or, or shall we say, once she moves, it shows. But, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So, next, we add the game, Triple H, in the ring. And he was addressing a man that's always giving me a funny feeling in my stomach. Oh, no. <laughs> Big Dave. <laughs> yeah. Now, I've got to say, I really enjoyed this promo. Yeah. Which is strange, because a lot of Triple H's promos tend to be a bit long-winded. Mm. But they did the whole Batista thing beforehand, where he put out his video and oh, I, I hate Philadelphia, I'm not going to be there. At that point, you're like, okay. Angry face right there. <laughs> so, Batista's the bad guy now, in this situation. Yeah. Yeah, he beat up a 70-year-old man. <laughs> and it was... You know, we, we know pretty much most of wrestlers' real names are and everything, but it was just weird for, like, Triple H to actually reference Rick as Richard Flair. Yeah. On, on national television. I don't think it's ever been done before. Yeah. But I think this rivalry is getting... They're adding a lot of personal stuff into mm. this. Because Batista has bitched about this for, like, two years. Mm. Yeah, and then Triple H's like, So what are you going to do about it? You need to show up. Be a man. Stop being a coward. And tell me what you want. He said. He said because because whenever you don't get your own way, you just you just <laughs> leave and quit. <laughs> you quit. <laughs> yeah, this got really personal. It's like the fans didn't give you the reaction you wanted, so you quit. You <laughs> didn't get the title shot, so you quit. Ooh. And it's like, wow, in the space of one promo, they've sold this match for me. Yeah, pretty much. It's yeah. like, I now want to see this match. <laughs> I mean, this match has been pretty much ongoing for over a year. Because mm. it was originally going to happen last year until... Was it Triple H got injured? Or I think, like, Batista's schedule partially wouldn't allow it as well. Because I think he... It was his schedule, because they would have been doing Avengers yeah. promotion around that time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so, yeah, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with this match happening. Triple H wasn't injured, he was in that tag match with Kurt Angle. Oh, yeah, of course he was, isn't he? So, no, no, good problem. Mm. Right. So, we've got a tag team gauntlet match. Yeah. <laughs> now, and get this, this came about because three tag teams were verbally insulting heavy machinery in the oh. locker room. They were making fun of them. How do they sleep at night? I don't know. In this be a star tag team. <laughs> so um I don't even think there was anything even on the line in no, this one. No, no, it was just the match. Okay. <laughs> so we had the leaders of the stakes and weights <laughs> oh. movement. And of course we had to get the reminder that the B team are still employed. <laughs> yeah. And of course, the, the recently reunited Edgeheads. Yep. Hawkins and Ryder. 
And of course, another team that they've got occasionally remind you. Yeah, they're still around. The Ascension. <laughs> yeah, because they've been around for like two years now on the main roster and have done absolutely nothing. Jesus, it's been that long. Probably longer. Bloody hell. Well, no, I'm, I'm not even going to bore you with, with this one. I mean, <laughs> let's be honest here. Heavy Machinery beat all three of them. Yeah. I think it was the B team who went first. Yeah. Then I think Hawkins and Ryder were next. Yeah. And the Ascension were last. Yeah. They all lost. <laughs> yeah, why? They don't have stakes and weight. <laughs> Come on, Tucky. <laughs> Dirt. <laughs> so, next. Next one. Ah, okay. So we've got Elias versus Dean Ambrose. Just a normal one on one match? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can't say I was tremendously pleased with this one. No, it was really weird and. Maybe. I say awkward? Maybe it was because the crowd weren't into it or like they just. they really didn't gel with each other. Mm. But. Uh, this match just it did not work for me. No. And then uh, Elias won with yeah. the drift away. And then I think then we had the awful trio come out. Yeah, they started putting a beat down on Dean. Then of course you knew the inevitable was happening. Yeah, Seth came down. Then Roman, and they cleared the house. Oh no no no! No no! I'm getting this all wrong. I think I think it was uh, Seth and Roman come out, and they were sort of like, right, come on, let's let's get on, let's do this, and because then Ambrose went up into the audience. And that, and then I think bloody the goon squad turned up, and then like Ambrose sort of in the crowd going, oh, oh, fuck's sake, right, let's go. Yeah, he came back. Yeah, and then they cleared house. And then, of course, right at the end, Seth and Roman put their fists in, and obviously just purely to build up momentum. Dean was pacing back as well as going, oh, oh, I don't know. Uh, he put his fist in in the end. Of, anyway. of course he did. So, the last three months of storyline, you know, Ambrose burning his jacket, yeah. saying he's better off without the shield. All means nothing. So, it's essentially all been whitewashed. They're yeah. like, yeah, forget that happened. Yeah. And I don't like how they're promoting this as the last time the shield is together. Yeah. Because it's it's not gonna be. Let's no, be honest here. No, no, it's not. Oh yeah, and so, in case you didn't know, they announced a six-man tag team match for this weekend at Fastlane. Yeah, and it it's it's gonna be the six wrestlers we just mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> a bit late. This was kind of code for oh god, Roman's back. We have nothing to do with him. Seth has nothing to do until WrestleMania. When Brock decides he wants to turn up for work. <laughs> we have nothing for Ambrose. What can we do? I'll just throw the shield together one more time. The, the, the fans, will, they won't care. Mark. <laughs> Mark. So, to further build up a match at Fastlane, we had a singles match for a tag team match player. Didn't they do this last week? Yeah, I think it was the reverse of it, yeah. So we got Tamina versus Sasha Banks. Again, I had the same problem with this one as I had with the last one. It just really felt like it didn't work. Yeah, pretty much. So I think, was it a distraction or something? And Tamina picked up the victory in this one with a super kick. Yeah. Because it's not been stated enough recently. We do not see enough super kicks. We need more. 
Every week. In fact, every match should have a super kick. Mm. At least one. Mm. Um. Yeah, I'm not even going to mention that. Oh, yeah, some rubbish angle with Strowman and... The two guys who were there from Saturday Night Live. Don't care. Just not interested as well. I, I wanted Strowman to beat this guy up. Because he was like, it's all fake, isn't it? And Strowman kind of got like pissed off. Mm. Launched him up against the wall. Yeah. So, it's that one time of the week where Jim Cornette gets <laughs> interested in WWE television. Yeah, he gets off his seat. The Revival. And now you're taking on Alistair Black and Ricochet. Hmm. And for no reason whatsoever, Gable and Jordan were there. Uh, no. Uh, Gable and Jordan. <laughs> no, they were in the back watching on TV. Yeah, I, I don't care. I, I really oh. don't care. God, yeah. So, so, yeah. They've pretty much buried the revival since they won the tag titles. Yeah. They've had like three matches and lost all of them. Mm. And then who was it who interfered in this one? I'm, I'm struggling to remember. Oh... I think, it, I think it was Dawson was outside on the mat and Gable and Rude come out and then just to piss them off they started beating up Dawson and the Revival won by DQ. Great. Because it was for the tag titles. Yeah. So that means Revival keep the belt. Mm-hmm. Ugh, oh, whatever. All right. So... Just to add on from that, it's now been announced a couple of days after all. Oh, yeah. We're going to have it as a triple threat match at Fastlane. Great. <laughs> yeah. Ah. So, let's get started on this. So, I think it might have happened earlier on in the night. Stephanie announced that due to Ronda's actions last week, uh... The, the authority have decided to reinstate Becky Lynch. Yeah. She's no longer suspended, and uh, they're taking Ronda's actions as if she's vacated the title. So Stephanie said they're going to have a match at Fastlane. Becky versus Charlotte for the vacant women's title. Yeah, i I got a bit of a problem with that. It's like... Becky, yeah, I can understand her being on Raw. She won the Royal Rumble. Said yeah. she's challenging Raw champion. Yeah. Charlotte, isn't she technically still a SmackDown wrestler? Yeah, she is still a SmackDown wrestler. Ugh. She just decided to turn up on Raw one one time, and then they thought, like, oh, screw it. She can be on both shows. It's fine. Brand extension be damned. So, yeah. So then... We then went out to the ring to do contract signing and that because uh, Becky, oh, yeah. Becky had to sign a waiver basically yeah. saying that if she gets really badly hurt against Charlotte, Dodo is not to blame. She did it on her own accord. Yeah. So, to, to be honest, at times this was painful to watch. I agree. Because Charlotte was just trying to play the the egotistical overconfident heel and unfortunately I think it's got to a point where with Charlotte with like the general audience they're just all like I don't care if you're heel or face just no <laughs> <laughs> just no well, it's the same problem isn't it she doesn't didn't need to be in the match no I mean she's there and the crowd have accepted it but yeah they're just that's it it's acceptance it's not booing or cheering it's just yeah. okay fine whatever yeah and I think generally the whole consensus is like you know inevitably I think we are going to get the triple threat mania yeah but I think people's general perception of it is as long as Becky wins it at mania it's fine yeah <laughs> but let's be honest that's probably going to happen anyway yeah so, Becky signed the waiver, Stephanie was announcing the match, 
And then out of the blue, Ronda Rousey turned up in the arena. Oh, yeah. So then she came down and she had to step on. I actually haven't vacated the title, so you can give me my title back. It's true, she never actually said, I, I'm relinquishing the title. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. so Steph reluctantly gave it back to us, and Stephanie was sort of like, oh, fine, uh, well, we still have Charlotte and Becky, but, uh, yeah, if, if Becky wins, she, she gets added to the match at WrestleMania. And then Ronda went on a massive tirade and stating about she's Ronda Rousey, she can do whatever the hell she likes, and if she wants to go rogue, she can go rogue whenever the hell she likes and all of this stuff. So it's all like, great, so Becky's the ridiculously over-the-top baby face in this yep. thing. Charlotte, nobody cares. They've just accepted she's part of this picture. Yeah. And then they're sort of, oh, well, you know, we... We've got to have a heel in this match. Of so, course. Oh, Ronda's got to turn heel then. Yeah, I mean, this was the generic screw the audience promo. It was like, yeah. oh, I'm doing this for myself. I'm not doing it for any of you. No mm. more smiling, happy Ronda. Which is good, because no one wanted happy, smiling Ronda. <laughs> yeah. So then... So Ronda then went on a massive attack. Yeah. She kicked... Charlotte once, and that was the end of Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, she, she just w went outside the ring. Still on her feet. And then she went on a massive attack on Becky. Yeah, she kept putting her in the armbar. Well, do you know what really frustrated me about this? A couple of times she actually, like, properly put her in the armbar. Mm -hmm. Then other times she was doing the stupid BS bent one, and I was just like, ugh. Yeah, so yeah, Ronda's the, Ronda's the heel in this match now. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. I I prefer this Ronda rather than smiling, happy baby face Ronda. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then there was some rubbish backstage where like Stephanie said, you know, oh, I'm, I'm sick to my stomach what Ronda did to Becky out there and oh, whatever, Steph. Nobody really cares. Yeah, apparently she's going to take action against what Ronda did. Which means she'll probably put her in a handicap match against the Riot Squad. Oh, God. And then she'll beat all the Riot Squad on her own. Yeah. <laughs> See, it writes itself. <laughs> yeah, and well, that, that's how we ended Raw. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I have nothing more to add. <laughs> No? So, as always, from your hosts, the Master of the Brain Down, Martin, and the one and only Sam H, we'll see you again for the next one. Rogue Nation, everybody. <laughs>